we always talk about when things were founded. We always talk about what happened. We always talk about um, the dates, the names. But the more important question is why? Why was this thing so important? Why was it so imp imperative that the colonies seize control of this area that they would call Pittsburgh? Why? Because of water. One of the reasons why we chose Earth, and more specifically this place they call Pretzelvania, was their abundance of pretzels. Did you know you can get pretzels at a gas station? Any gas station? You can. You can now, thanks to time. Time has a way of changing things. There was a time not so long ago when there were no pretzels on the wagon trail leading out west where settlers were pressed to seek out prosperity in a new land of opportunity. This new land was rife with danger in contrast to its shiny and promising facade. Pittsburgh was founded on November 27, 1758. The city was named by a gentleman by the name of John Forbes in honor of British statesman William Pitt, the first Earl of Chatham. The climate of the culture at the time was chaotic. Various entities all wanted a shot at their claim to the land. The British, the French, and the Indians. The Indians consisted of several tribes. The Iroquois, who referred to themselves as the Six Nations. The Lenape, who were also referred to as the Delaware. And the Shawnee tribe. Here's the Fort Pitt Museum. We're down in Pittsburgh at the point. And uh, I was talking yesterday about Fort Pitt and how it came about. This is one of the last standing bastions of the Fort Pitt Museum, where, uh, or of Fort Pitt, where the museum is. And uh, it was built only a stone's throw away from Fort Duquesne, which stood right over that way. Where you can see the outline. Obviously, this is a significant spot here. Uh, Daughters of the Revolution built this historic landmark. It's the Fort Pitt Blockhouse, constructed in 1764. It's the only surviving structure of Fort Pitt, Pittsburgh's oldest architectural landmark, and. Uh, it was put here by the Pittsburgh History and Landmarks Foundation. That's who preserved this, this particular little spot here. And we talked about blockhouses in some of our other videos. And here we have a fine example of a preserved blockhouse. Um, this is kind of exciting because I haven't seen one in a long, long time. And you can see it's very different in its construction. You can see spaces in the wood. Um, there are like wooden trusses that go through uh, the, the walls of the building. Wooden trusses that have slots for guns. The slots were put there so that um, the inhabitants of the blockhouse could, they could fit their rifle through it, but not much else. You see there's some sort of like old plaque up at the top there written in German or maybe British, maybe English, Old English, I don't know. The door should open, right? So I guess they're not open. You said they were open. They look open to me. What are you expecting, a grocery store? Are you expecting automatic doors, buddy? Pretty much. <laughs> no, I think you're gonna have to pull the handle this time. Either that or a call button.
Yeah, see, locked. And they even open? They even open on Sundays? Open daily. And what time is it? You tell me. It's almost 11. The things about the um, French <laughs> Indian <Time> War. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, no, it's just a frustration. You ain't getting anything. Your watch says 11, and we didn't change the clocks. <laughs> That's enough out of you. <laughs> One of the more interesting things about the <laughs> French Indian War. Back in 1754. It's so funny. We're two little dumbasses. I call the bus for nothing. What I found interesting about the French Indian War, when the British came to take over Fort Duquesne, the French completely, they knew like they were losing, so they just completely burned and abandoned the fort themselves. They completely destroyed it themselves. Leave it up to the French to do something like that. This is Leighton Brush with Pretzels in History, and we're here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the home of Steelers football, Primanti Brothers sandwich, the incline, and a burgeoning banking industry. Pittsburgh is also known for its rich history, its many bridges, and the Primanti Brothers sandwich. Oh, that's right, I mentioned that. Um, personally, I'm a fan of sandwiches. Primanti Brothers sandwich is an interesting sandwich. Not many sandwiches feature fries and coleslaw. Pittsburgh is one of those, those places which is a hodgepodge of culture, and it has a unique language of its own. Uh, for anybody that's ever been to Pittsburgh and been shouted at, hey, Yin's over there, then Yin's know what I'm talking about. So we're here near the point, near Fort Duquesne and Fort Pitt. Fort Duquesne and Fort Pitt are a very interesting historical topic for us because it gives us insight into how this place came about. And history shows us that there's been a battle over this one spot, this key area, because it is the merging of three major rivers, the Ohio, the Monongahela, and the Allegheny River. So at the beginning of the French Indian War, there was a fort built by the British known as Fort Prince George here at the point in Pittsburgh. It was not very big and um, not completely finished. At the beginning of the French Indian War, the French performed an invasion and they took over the Fort George and built Fort Duquesne. Fort Duquesne was a rather large intimidating fort. It was well built and it would have done well had it been located in a slightly different area. Historians would agree that one of Fort Duquesne's biggest weaknesses was that it was built at the bottom of a hill, which made it an easy target for advancing armies.
So after a given amount of time, Fort Duquesne was eventually infiltrated by the British. So the British were taken over by the French, and then the French were taken over by the British. It's so neat seeing these old pictures of what a place looked like before we came and screwed it all up. When I say we, I mean modern society. And when I say screwed, I mean built what we built. We made our mark. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Here they're talking about the Seneca tribe. There are no, so many different tribes. There's the Iroquois, the Seneca, Seneca, the Lenape, the Shawnee tribe, the Delaware. The Delaware were also known as the Lenape. I'd say, Kimmy, by the time this is all said and done, we should be experts on the French Indian War. question. What is this, like some kind of quilt? Yeah. A clown. It's like a fabric map. Interesting that sod would be one of the elements in a fort. I always thought that sod was a more like a modern type of building material. Here's an example of uh, Amer uh, who are these American children, British children that were captured by Native Americans and became assimilated. You know, that kind of thing happened on both sides and you don't always hear about it on the other side. You hear more about it coming from the tales of things like Pocahontas where Pocahontas was uh, captured and, and assimilated into the white population.
I like it. Oh, early American playing card. You never know what you're gonna find in a place like this. Also the first American cookbook. Wonder if they have a recipe for pretzels in there. <laughs> Kinda doubt it. The Washington I heard her story is really good, so boring. I it's funny. They always call it the seven year war, but every time I do the math, it's more like nine years. Maybe even 11. I need to get that, and I know this is creepy, but they don't talk a lot about this. I would like to get this book as well, Many Tender Ties Women in Fur Trade Society, and also Women Indian Captivity um, Narratives. They don't talk about that much either. Imagine hearing drums beating in the distance. Thank you very much, sir. Aggie, run it. You want to get him right now? No. Okay. Just well, later? Yeah. Because you've got some books that you still need to read. I know. I'm still reading. I read them. So that's it for old Hank. As far as pretzels and history goes, they're probably gonna go get some chocolate. As for me, the other thing that I forgot to mention about Pittsburgh, nowadays it's got a really nice night light. But I don't think you guys are ready for that, are you? I don't think so.